good morning. And good morning, our Savior at home. Some of us might be slightly jealous of your pajamas and coffee this morning. <laughs> blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I will turn their mourning into joy, 
I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to be God. God. O Lord of hosts, my soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have converted it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold for those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. You, God.
Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the wise men who had come from the east had departed, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are now dead. Then Jesus got up and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. At first glance, we might think today's lessons are not connected to the beginning of a new year. But in their own way, each of these readings moves resolutely toward hope. As humans, we are hardwired to hope in every new beginning. 2021 is exactly that. This year, more than any I can remember, I cannot hold my hopes and dreams separately from the context of the year we have just lived. We are still living in those same circumstances, of course. A calendar rollover does not change reality. But it does remind us of what is possible in the future. And that is exactly where our lectionary takes us this morning. The reading from Jeremiah looks forward to a future for people who are terrified in the narratological present. Our text is situated after the first Babylonian deportation of Judeans in 597, you can find out about that in Jeremiah 24 and 29. And the surrounding texts strike ominous notes regarding the Babylonian invasion, God's wrath, and the devastating disputes that fracture God's people. The author of these observations, Carolyn Sharp, concludes that the challenge is to move forward faithfully in the present moment. Trusting that through grace, the life of the Reformed community can become like a watered garden. A watered garden. Isn't that a rich metaphor for where we find ourselves right now? We have perhaps felt like desert wanderers as we have tried to navigate these times. But while not arid, it is still not the garden we imagined and definitely not the garden we would have chosen. In our close and wider circles, we all have experienced the following. Fear, loss, anger, frustration, despair, insecurity, and grief. These are the exact emotions the Israelites were feeling in exile. But we also have what they held in their hearts, and we have it in abundance. Hope. God did not abandon them. 
and God has not abandoned us. C.L. Crouch says that a strange silence surrounds this time in Israel's history, a silence that points to the impossibility of giving voice to profound trauma. But after this period of unspeakable suffering, God promises the Israelites that God will bring them home again, even if they have been scattered to the farthest parts of the earth. God will bring them home again. The joy this word evokes is so profound, it moves the people to tears. The pain and loss through which they have struggled for so long will be brought to an end. God will deliver them. Psalm 84, which some of us translate immediately into the music of the Bagram's Requiem, speaks passionately of the relationship past, present, and future. This is a song of loving and longing, not for a lover, but for the presence of Yahweh. The psalmist expresses this longing for the courts of Yahweh, meaning the temple, and the living God, Yahweh. He showcases the temple in this psalm because the temple was God's dwelling place. The place where people could make their closest approach to God's presence. We think about the temple differently as we begin this year. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Still, the longer I hang out in this place without all of us being able to worship together, and I'm fairly certain this is true for Chip as well. The more I know that what is sacred and special and of God and our Savior is actually not focused in this building. No one can argue that God is present and to be found in this place, of course. I felt that the very first time I stood behind the altar. But God is so present in our people. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Through Jesus and in communion, spiritual or material, we become God's home. And together we reinforce the strength of the walls and nurture in each other the beauty within. We travel the length of this psalm end to end. Just as with those in ancient exile, 2020 has been a year in which adversity has brought us closer to God and to each other. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. We tend easily to forget that trusting in the Lord was a way of life for Jesus' earthly parents. After the wise men had left, and please note, the wise men are on the move this morning. They are not where you saw them Christmas Eve. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search out the child and destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. Talk about isolation. This was a complete separation from their family network. They could not even let them know that they were safe. In the identical way that our attachment to our own sanctuary can become the main focus of God's presence, we tend to want to stay at the manger, where things feel soft and bright and safe. It is our silent night moment, the one in which we linger in the candlelight, gazing at the beautiful and peaceful Holy Family. But that image is a moment. We are not meant to stay there. God's larger plan is so evident in Matthew's account of forced migration. 
And the ultimate result of that plan is this. Evil will have no place to lay its head. This is a relationship which transcends time, space, and human concepts. Our lessons remind us that God did not abandon Mary and Joseph, nor those who were exiled to Babylon. In Jesus, we know a love which both conquers and transcends death. Dear Lord, please make it simple. These are stressful times. And so God sends the shorthand to carry our hopes into 2021. I have not abandoned you. Rejoice. Amen. Amen. Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three on page 11 of your bulletin or page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We especially pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Brandon Borat, Kathy Griffin, Andrew Hain, Andrew Skiles, Nancy Burton. We also pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week. Phil yes. and Suzanne Oki. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Andrew, our bishop, and Janie, our rector, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially those who have died. Chase Hukatir. Bob Barrett, Jason Rickard, let light perpetual shine upon them. 
We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially those on our parish prayer list. Allison Taylor, Mike Murray, Francis Rouse, Marion Mannheim, Jenny Muncy Myers, Delmar Long, Nancy Rattery, Forrest Wilkerson, Mike Spragans, Don D. Brown, Emma Mulvich, Eddie Brown, the Hoopther family, Alma Carrington, Elijah McCants, Howard Boyles, Jim Landis, Anna Hull, Georgiana Manning, Chris Loomis, Doug Huffstetler, Betty Elkins, all who continue to be afflicted by COVID-19 and its effects. Let us pray for all of those serving in the military, especially Thomas Hannah Dawson. God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name amen almighty god have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our lord jesus christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the holy spirit keep you in eternal life amen, amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. today and anyone that may be visiting we extend a very special welcome to you look for this week's email on e-news on thursday for upcoming news and events thank you for worship, worshiping with us today together let us celebrate christ serve christ and share christ thank you it's like he's always there it's wonderful the kings alas won't get to celebrate Epiphany with us because of the way the dates fall and because this is a this is the year that it is. But as you can see, they are coming closer. And I promise you that before the altar guild puts them away, they will have a little bit of time in front of the manger. We will not deny them that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us, with spiritual food and the sacrament of your body and blood, send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.